everybody welcome back to my channel spring has sprung which for me means my favorite holiday is coming up passover passover is kind of a complicated celebration that is hard to summarize but i'm going to do my best just in case you're not quite sure what it is passover is the celebration and retelling of the story of passover where the jewish people were freed from being slaves in egypt it is also a celebration of spring and the new seasons, the new birth, and also a reflection on the past year and sort of the cultural trauma that the Jewish people have endured and also an acknowledgement of current trauma and inequality that still exists, at least the way that my family does it and the way that our Haggadah tells it. But Passover in and of itself is not what you are here to see. You are here because you clicked on a video about making vegetarian matzo ball soup from scratch kind of. Growing up, matzo ball soup was a delicious treat normally got at Jewish delis or restaurants. If it was made at home, it was usually from a box mix. And there's nothing wrong with box mix. Just for me, I prefer my soup having a little bit more oomph. And also the box mix is usually chicken based and my sister-in-law is vegetarian, so she can't have that. And I think everyone should have matzo ball soup. So today I am recipe testing a vegetarian version of the chicken matzo ball soup that I've made the past couple of years to start with. The matzo meal. Should I like explain what matzo meal is? Yeah, I'm gonna do that, one second. If you've heard of matzo ball soup, you might not actually know what it's made out of because if you've never celebrated Passover, it's possible you've never actually seen matzo. Although you've probably seen it in the grocery store during Passover season, which might be Easter for you. This is what matzo is. It is an unseasoned, unleavened, almost cracker. This is one of the central symbols of Passover. And during Passover, you're not supposed to eat leavened bread. If you are one of those people who doesn't eat even noodles during Passover and you still want to have soup as part of the big Passover feast, you want something that is still matzo based. And so we have matzo meal. Matzo meal is ground up matzo. So it almost turns it back into a flour although it has been baked once before. And this sort of reconstituted flour is what matzo balls are made out of. One cup of matzo meal. Next up, eggs. Eggs are the main binding agent. I probably should have scrambled the eggs first and then added the matzo meal, but I really wanted to put the matzo meal first, so. If you've never been to Passover, I do find it a very approachable holiday because you're literally given a script, the Haggadah. Everyone takes turns reading out a page or a paragraph. It's a very participatory holiday, so, you know, you're not sitting there thinking, I don't know what's going on. And uh, the Haggadah itself, it retells the story of Passover. It explains a lot of the symbolism as part of the experience. So over the years, we've had a lot of friends who are not Jewish come to our Passover and sort of experience that part of our culture. And so if you've been invited and you're worried about that, uh, in general, it's a pretty approachable holiday. Now, I have been to some seders where I, as someone who has been doing Passover my whole life, did feel uncomfortable. So probably ask how faithful, how long a seder is going to be. I'm saying, do your research, know about the family that you're going to do a seder with, but don't dismiss it out of hand, basically. Okay. Next up, the fresh herbs, dill. If I had parsley, I'd probably also put that in right now. We don't have it right now, but parsley is our green herbs for the Seder, so we will definitely have way too much when actual Passover comes around. Again, this is just a recipe test, so I will definitely be putting in parsley for the actual feast. The recipe calls for a quarter cup. I'm very bad at estimating those sorts of things, but that looks about right, right? This is the only non-plastic thing that's clean right now that has a spout, but it gets really hot in the microwave. Just gonna risk it. So normally you would use chickens. <laughs> normally you would use chickens. <laughs> normally, <laughs> normally you would use chicken schmaltz, which is rendered chicken fat in matzo balls. And I have done that. I've also used butter before when we didn't have chicken skin to make chicken schmaltz with. It works just fine. It actually possibly makes it a bit more lush because the butter will kind of leak out into the soup a little bit and make the soup a bit more lipid forward. Oh. 
The recipe calls for four tablespoons. I don't have four tablespoons and I am the only one eating this right now. Well, and probably Jane's too. All that to say, it's fine if I only have three and a half right now. This is going to get microwaved and then cooled down so it doesn't curdle the eggs. Butter's probably cool, yeah. Here's where I'm doing something funky. Like I said, usually instead of butter, you have chicken schmaltz, but that's not vegetarian. So I'm going to be using some vegetarian better than bouillon, and I'm going to mix it with seltzer water. What the heck you might be thinking? Seltzer water, are you serious? Yes, this is one of the ways that you can lighten your matzo balls if you want them to be a bit spongier. There are kind of two schools of thought for matzo balls. One is the super dense ones that you've probably had at Jewish delis. Those are delicious, those are really cool. Those are not my preference. I like them a bit lighter, I guess a bit more dumplingy. They're still nice and dense in the middle, but it means that you get more of a variety of textures. So I will also be using some baking powder to again, just aid in that lightening. I think it soaks up more soup. I think it makes it taste better, but you can disagree with me and that's okay. <laughs> so I'm going to be pouring in a quarter of a cup of seltzer water and then adding, let's say a quarter of a tablespoon. That's probably going to be too concentrated, but we'll see what happens. And, and this is just for me, so I can fix this before my Passover. I'll let you know what I recommend at the end. Uh, this is very old seltzer water. I'll be using new stuff for actual Passover. First try. Sometimes you also have chicken broth instead of seltzer water, if you're in the, uh, denser school of thought of matzo balls. So this is kind of standing in both for schmaltz and for broth. The new flavor of LaCroix, sparkling veggie broth. It's gonna be a hit, just you wait. Here's that baking powder I mentioned, half a teaspoon, two teaspoons of kosher salt, not because it's kosher, but because kosher salt is just good for cooking, I think, and then some fresh ground black pepper. As you can see, unlike a normal dumpling situation for soup, you can still see the like individual matzo texture in there. Because of that, and possibly also a chicken and dumpling soup, like I've only made that once and I don't really remember how we did it. Uh, we want this to sit and hydrate for at least two hours is what I've seen. Usually I make this the night before Passover and then I roll up the matzo balls and drop them in the soup to boil the next day. So usually I do this overnight, but again, recipe testing. So we don't have to be perfect. So two hours in the fridge. So now it's time for the soup part of matzo ball soup. First up, I wanted to try adding garlic to the vegetables that will be accompanying the matzo balls. I thought it might add some savory depth. Next up, onions. Onions are my ultimate not so secret ingredient when it comes to soup. I saute them until they're nice and caramelized and they add so much good flavor to store-bought broth. Cauliflowers and carrots are what I decided to be the main vegetables, but I wanted them to be bite-sized so you could get a little bit of everything on the spoon. Like I said, I started off by sautéing the onions until they were nice and brown, just in some oil and with some salt to draw out their oniony moisture. After a lot of sautéing, I added the carrots and cauliflower. I wanted to see if I could get some caramelization on them, but ultimately I didn't get much. Probably there was too much moisture in the pot. Then I added the garlic and pretty quickly added the liquid because I was nervous about burning the garlic. When I make the soup for Passover, I'm definitely going to be adding more garlic and letting it cook a bit more. Most likely I'll be adding it after the onions have cooked and before the carrots and the cauliflower. Because I'm using vegetable better than bouillon, first I add a bunch of water to the pot and then a heaping spoonful of the concentrate. So before I add any matzo ball into here, I'm going to taste it for seasoning. Hmm. I actually think we need more better than bouillon. I went too light on that. Okay, that tastes much better. And the carrots are cooked, so I'm guessing the cauliflower is also cooked all the way through. Regardless, they're still cooking for 10 more minutes. So this is where you really get your hands dirty. I take about that much. Again, there are multiple schools of thought for matzo balls. I do prefer smaller ones. I just think they're easier to eat. I've also found that when you cook them, they only really need about 10 minutes, but the longer that you cook them, the lighter and fluffier they get. 
which is especially nice for the Seder because if I'm going to be making matzo ball soup, which is gonna be the first thing that we eat after the Seder during the feast, I don't wanna to have to rush between the Seder and the soup. I'd rather be able to set it up before we start the Seder and uh, just have it be ready to serve at the end. A lot of recipes will say, don't boil your matzo balls straight in the soup that you're gonna serve to people. It will cloud up the soup and make it not look as good. I haven't really dealt with that issue. I'm not sure why. Maybe it's because I turned down the heat because I don't want the bubbling uh, to break up the matzo balls. You can see them starting to rise. There's always gonna be one ball at the end that's either much larger or much smaller. I really don't think there's a way to avoid it. I'm gonna turn up the heat just a little bit because we just put very cold matzo balls into here. And I might give it a little stir just to make sure no one's sticking. This looks so good. Okay, I'm gonna put the top on just to let it come back up to temp. The recipe says about 10 minutes. I'll come back in five just to make sure it's not boiling too hot. Oh, that tastes so good. Yeah, we're good. This is perfect. I can't find my ladle, so this is what we're going with. Oh, we did get one matzo ball that fell apart. It happens. We're not perfect. I'll just leave the heat on low to keep this warm and let's go taste test. Uh, the matzo balls might be hot. They usually are. Delicious. A little too hot for me for now. Oh, it's so good. Yeah, thank you. I think this is a delicious vegetarian matzo ball soup, possibly even better than some chicken matzo ball soup. Oh yeah, I don't miss the, I don't miss the chickeniness at all. Anyway, I'm excited to eat it. Uh, I'm very excited for Passover. Me too. I don't know how to end this video. I'm just really tired. I've been working on this for like six hours and I want to eat. <laughs> you hold up the whole bowl, you go cheers, and then you slurp. Oh my god, like a Beauty and the Beast. Yes. <laughs> cheers. Wait, 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 can we? Lachaim. Lachaim. <laughs>